Welcome all explorers, live from Portland, Maine. Let's do it. All right, welcome all explorers. You're now watching Learn Around the World's Meet a Local. Just for those of us just joining us, if you're custom or accustomed to one of our virtual field trips, uh, we're not playing Kahoot during this program and that's okay. We have a lot of other fun interactive activities. So you may need a piece of paper and something to write with. Just letting you know right now. Yeah, go ahead and do that. All right, so let us know right now. This is an interactive experience. So even though this isn't a geo show, this is a guest speaker. So meet around, learn around the world's meet a local. We bring on guest speakers from a lot around the world. And instead of learning about my travels and experiences to different places, it's better to actually meet someone from these places and uh, ask them live questions. And that's what we get the opportunity to do right here on our Meet a Local show. So in order for it to be interactive, you need to use that chat box. So uh, go ahead early and often, send in as many questions as you can, uh, depending on how many we get 
we may or may not get to them all, but we will have a great conversation uh, today with Luna. So Luna is going to be talking to us today about Palestine and Israel, and we'll learn about uh, why uh, we may call that place two different names. All right. So today's show is brought to you by learnaroundtheworld.com, bringing you virtual field trips and guest speakers just like today from all over the world. And we are also partnering with Project Exchange. Project Exchange unites global citizens through digital exchange. And to give a quick introduction to Project Exchange, we'd like to welcome on Ashley. And Ashley is going to tell us a little bit more about the programs that they run over at Project Exchange. Welcome, Ashley. Hey, thank you, Brandon. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Ashley Lin, and I am a student from Vancouver, Washington. I'm also the founder of Project Exchange, which, as Brandon mentioned, is an international nonprofit that runs online cultural exchange programs for middle and high school students around the world. Um, so every 12 weeks, we run a cohort of our online exchange where we match you with another student from a different country so you can kind of build new friendships and learn about each other's cultures. Um, and so currently we're working with over 150 students from more than 23 countries. So just a great way to make new friends and meet new people. Um, and so your speaker today, Luna, is actually one of our digital exchange program graduates from our last cohort of the exchange. Um, so if you're inspired by Luna and want to learn more about online cultural exchange experiences, definitely check out our website at myprojectexchange.com. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Ashley. And Explorers, we cannot recommend, recommend Project Exchange enough. So we know that a lot of our uh, audience members are a little bit younger, but keep Project Exchange right in the front of your mind because as you become older uh, entering into middle school and high school we cannot recommend this program enough as a great way to connect with other young people your age from around the world and to learn from each other so without further ado we are going to jump into today's guest speaker and we are going to introduce Luna and we always start off our programs here talking about locations so Luna knows uh, some of our locations and who she's speaking with today please let us know where in the chat box you're watching from today and we can go ahead and tell you Luna right now we have Evan from uh, Ohio we have Beasley from Georgia with us uh, we have Olivia from Ohio as well we have Peter joining us from Maryland USA we have Abigail also from Maryland so lots and lots of folks uh, watching. We have Jeanette from Massachusetts. Cam is watching from Ohio as well. So lots of people that are joining us. And if you haven't uh, told us where you're watching from today, please put it down there uh, sooner than later so we can give you a shout out. And I am coming to this experience today from Portland, Maine in the United States. And we always start off our programs acknowledging that we are on native land of the Wabanaki people or people of the dawn right here in Maine, USA. So if you live anywhere in the Americas and you don't know the native land you're on, that's a great place to start with becoming a global citizen. Know your place, your home, and then go out into the world. So let's go ahead, without further ado, um, where are we going today? Well, Luna is joining us live today for many of you from another part of the world. And Luna is coming to us live today from Palestine, Israel. And Luna, I want to let you, uh, how do you pronounce your city's name correctly? Sakhnin. All right. Sakhnin, is that correct? Sakhnin. Sakhnin. All right. All right. Yeah. So uh, without further ado, let's bring uh, Luna on. <laughs> Welcome, Luna. Can you tell us a little bit uh, about yourself and your home and maybe uh, – Maybe something that you've been enjoying about uh, about quarantine or something you've been doing at home recently. Oh, hi everyone. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy you're attending today and uh, you're excited and interested uh, about me and wanna know more about me and uh, my country and culture. Uh, first of all, my name is Luna Viunas. I'm 14 years old. Uh, I live in Palestine or Israel. I'm, I'm originally from Palestine, um, and of course, we will have today a trip uh, throughout my culture and country. Uh, first of all, uh, also, uh, I spend my quarantine at home, uh, have some activities, projects, 
and volunteering also, uh, virtual volunteering with uh, an organization. And I'm also a climate act activist. Uh, and we are having fun. So uh, invest your time and have a good day during this quarantine. And uh, that's it. Um, so um, I All will right. start. Yeah. OK, let me uh, bring that up for you. Yeah. You have mentioned that I'm from Palestine or Israel. And uh, I want to uh, explain to you today, what does that mean? All right. Are Israeli we back? Can you hear me now? Yep. Conflict. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, so let me get that started but, back for us again. Yeah. Brandon? All right, sorry, we're get, getting, uh, we like to say technology is great when it works. So we're going to uh, just reset that real quick for you. So if you want to go ahead and uh, again, if you're just joining us, let us know where you're watching from. And uh, so Luna, what do you like to uh, do for fun? What are some of your hobbies? Uh, I'm a violinist. I play violin. Uh, uh, Eastern violin, and uh, also I I like uh, dance zumba, and uh, I like to study. Uh, like my friends call me nerd, but I really like to study because I think uh, I enjoy studying. And um, as you know, I told you about my volunteering and uh, joining some programs. And also, I will talk about uh, like two of my oh, two of these molding programs that may uh, interest you. Uh, yeah. And also, of course, about uh, my culture and country and to have a brief uh, explanation about it. And also, I'm wearing something that may also interest you and i will uh, explain about it uh later all right okay so right off the bat if anyone has any questions for luna about uh her home if you'll put it in the chat box we would love to get to those as well and I'm just sorting this out, so it'll be just one second. Okay. Yeah, of course, if you want to ask any question, uh, I'm ready to answer your question. Uh, what's the weather like? Um, actually, like, um, like we have we have spring here. We we it's it doesn't uh very hot, and it's not very cold also. Um, yeah, and I'm also uh, turning on my air conditioner because I feel hot and <laughs> yeah. All right, so here okay. you go. Yeah, um, here is a brief explanation about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Um, as you see in the left side, uh, in 1917, uh, like the, it all started with Balfour Declaration. The uh, all the conflict started with Balfour Declaration in 1917, and then uh, the Arab Revolt in Palestine in 1936. Uh, after this, United Nations um, resolution for uh, dividing the, the land of Palestine to Arab and Jewish states in 1947. In the middle, as you see the map. 
uh, also retreat of Britain Empire and giving Jews the control uh, and the war of 1948. Then the war of 1967, as you see, and uh, the war of 1973. Uh, we have also the land day in 13th of March, 1976, that was in, uh, um, the 1976, but also we uh, have it like every 13th of March every year. Uh, the peace treaty between Egypt and Israel in 1979. Uh, we had also the Lebanese Israeli War in 1982. Uh, also, we had some uh, plan of peace between uh, the Israel and other Arab countries. And uh, today, here is the map uh, on the right. Uh, and uh, until today, like there is something that called infidelity process of peace between Palestine and Israel, uh, but it doesn't uh, like has no, uh, has no results yet. So the, uh, the green areas are what's left of for Palestine. Yes. And the white areas are Israel, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I'm living in the white area because uh, I'm living like officially in Israel, yeah. And the green area is for the Palestinians who uh, who uh, are living in the West Bank and uh, Gaza. Uh, someone said uh, something in the questions. Uh, mm -hmm. I will, so yeah. What, what is the government or what was the government called in 1917? Or what was the, the name? Was it Palestine, the name of the, the country? Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, Palestine in 1917, like uh, uh, we had a declaration and after it, uh, everything changed and uh, the also the uh, land of the Palestinians uh, was decreasing more and more uh, by the years. Yeah. So and, it, and was that a, a, were the Palestinian people willing to give that land up or was it taken without permission? Uh, of course, like they, we had war and uh, like, uh, yeah, so we had war and yeah, it, of course it stopped without permission because no one can take your, uh, your uh, the thing that you own uh, without your permission, uh, like with your permission, but they took it with, uh, without their permission and um, now there we have the diaspora that uh, like me, uh, like the people who are living on the white uh, white uh, side, and those people are having their land. They are living in their land, but uh, they are like officially from Israel. Um, okay. Someone also, yeah. yeah. Uh, so what were the results? Lots of people to both sides. Of course, we had lots of wars and lots of land to Palestinians, disabled villages, dis uh, uh, sorry, displaced villages, displaced Palestinians or Im immigrants. And uh, starting with reception of Jews in the diaspora and new identity to Arabs who succeeded to stay in their land after this series of wars, like me. Um, and this is a quick fact about my country. Uh, this is the map. It has borders for, uh, from Lebanon to the north. Lebanon is uh, from the north. Syria to the northeast. Jordan and West Bank to the east. Gaza and the Me Mediterranean Sea to the west. And Egypt to the southwest. And uh, here is Jerusalem, the capital city of, uh, of my country. Jerusalem is the religious and historical epicenter of the world. It's a serial and vibrant city, holy to Jews, Muslims, and Christians. Jerusalem is as unique as she is special. In Hebrew, it's called Yer Yerushalayim. In Arabic, Bayt al-Muqdis or al-Quds. Ancient city of the Middle East that since 1967 has been wholly under the rule of the state of Israel. Um, yeah, uh, here also, Jerusalem plays a central rule in the spiritual and emotional 
perspective of the three major monothe monotheistic religions. For Muslims, it's the goal of the Prophet Muhammad's myst mystic night journey and the site of one of Islamic Islam's most shared shrines. And this is the uh, uh, this is Al Aqsa Mosque. Um, yeah. For Christians, it's the scene of Jesus' agony and triumph. And this is the Church of the Holy Scripture in Jerusalem also. I also visited it and also visited Al-Quds, uh, Al-Aqsa, the mosque. And also uh, for Jews, Brandon? Yeah. For Jews, uh, throughout the world, it's the focus of age-old yearnings, a living proof of angel grandeur, and independence, a center of national renaissance. For all three faiths, it's a holy city, a center of pilgrimage and an object of devotion. And this is the Western wall, wall of the Jews. Um, yeah. uh, also, uh, should I, um, I will uh, answer some questions. Right, so if uh, you want to, before we get into diversity, sure. Yeah. So uh, one of the questions going back, well, Jeanette wanted to know, do you know in 1917, I know it's a long time ago, but do you mm -hmm. know the name of the Palestinian government? So like, what did they, in 1917, was there a president or was there a king uh, or did it have a name like parliament or any other name? Uh, do you know? Um, uh, no, we have a president, not a king. Uh, but uh, I'm sorry because I really don't know the the president, the name of the president of uh, the country. Like it's in 1917. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's okay. All yeah. right. So um, another great question is uh, Beasley wants to know: Have you been to uh, another country before? Yes, of course. And I was. What countries? Uh, I was in uh, Germany, in Switzerland. Uh, Turkey um, and French, uh, France, sorry, and uh, London, uh, United Kingdom. And let's see. And do you have a favorite? Let's go with food from any of these countries. Was one of these oh. countries stick out with uh, with their food? Which do you think has the best food for you? Uh, France. Actually, I uh, enjoyed eating the Corazon and um also the ice cream in france um and also like my latest uh flight was to germany uh for like an exchange program for uh for one week and um like also the ice cream in germany was very tasty and i really like uh like it um yeah all right. Oh, and do you have a favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, vanilla. Vanilla. All right. That yeah. happens to be my favorite flavor. Let us know in the chat box, Explorers, what is your favorite ice cream? Let's do an ice cream call out here. Let us know in the chat box, what is your favorite ice cream? And while you do that, uh, Luna's going to talk to us a little bit about diversity uh, in her home and, uh, and how that uh, relates to her life. Yeah. So uh, I live here, I live in a huge diversity. Muslims, uh, we are 16.9% uh, of the population, 75.4% uh, uh, Jews, 2.1% uh, Christians, and 1.7% Jews. And the rest of the population identifies otherwise, including a small Baha'i community. But in spite of that, we succeeded to make friendships. Behind every diversity, there are consequences, but we mustn't let di this diversity and the differences between us to make hate and racism here. Yeah, um, and also, can you continue? Yeah. Uh, also, I talked about Jerusalem first because it contains lots of religions and uh, it's a diverse uh, city. Then uh, also, I I want to talk about my experience with this diversity. Um, I'm part of two peace programs that meet people from different communities in Israel together. 
you get to know each other and each one's story and religion by storytelling or leadership activities. And this photo also uh, from my one of my uh, act, like uh, one of my events that I attended, and uh, I like this uh, photo, and uh, I really uh, it really means to me. Right, and in case people can't see that uh, carved into, what's carved into each one of the figures? Ah, yeah. Uh, at the right uh, is for the Christians, in the center is for Jews, and at the left is for Muslims. And they are all holding their uh, each other's hand. Yeah. All right. Great. Yeah, and it's also a handmade. Yeah. Is this the same one? Yeah, you are uh, I guess the other going way. backward. <laughs> uh, okay. okay, here we go. Okay, and uh, I want to talk about a program that's called Jerusalem Peace Peace Builders program. Uh, Jerusalem Peace Builders has a mission a mission to create a better future for humanity across religions, cultures, and nationalities. Uh, JBB's inter inter interfaith programs focus on uniting Israelis, Palestinians and Americans and providing them with the opportunities, relationships and skills they need to become future leaders for peace in the global community. This is a photo uh, with my Muslim, Jewish and Christian friends during the program. As you can see, I'm from the center. I'm wearing a, a pink uh, t-shirt and um, my friend, are holding me and I really also this like this. Yes, this is me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you know what it's like? It's like this. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah. you're all together. I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, I love that. Uh, also, Debate for Peace program. Debate for Peace brings together Arab and Jewish students from more like Arab, it includes Jews, Muslims and Christians and Jewish students from more than 60 cities and towns around Israel, as well as the Palestinian cities, to participate in model United Nations conferences, where we debate, negotiate, and try to resolve the most difficult and pressing challenges in international relations. Also, Debate for Peace helped me expand my knowledge about many national and international issues strengthen my confidence and debating skills. Uh, those on the, on the right, this is me on the, uh, on the conference. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can see me, but I am uh, sitting and uh, a red computer is, uh, is in front of me. This one? Yes. <laughs> and uh, in the center is my friend during a model United Nations conference. and. We were trying to write a resolution for um, a, to a topic on the, the conference. And it, this is me on black, black, uh, like uh, black on the center. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. And uh, at the left, meeting with ambassadors. We also meet with ambassadors and uh, like discuss the peace process. Uh, with with ambassadors from different countries and uh, kingdoms. Here is um, the ambassador of the kingdom of Netherlands. Uh, also, I want to mention something that uh, I like. If you can backward for a Jerusalem peace builders, if it's okay. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned that uh, like there are uniting Israelis, Palestinians, and uh, Americans. Also, uh, like we meet in a camp uh, in many like states or in America, and mm -hmm. uh, maybe some of uh, the participants maybe is interested, so we can talk with it with them later. Oh, that yeah. sounds great. Uh, yeah. Jeanette was saying on the chat that. Uh, uh, this sounds like such a wonderful program. And also, uh, she said, "Have you do you know about the hand-in-hand -hand organization that runs Israel and Palestine schools? 
Have you ever heard of those, that organization? Hand in hand. Uh, no, I really didn't hear about it, but I will Google it and uh, take it because, yeah, it seems a wonderful program. Maybe I can, uh, yeah, take it. Thank you for, <laughs> right. thank you, Jayanti, for your uh, comment. So, um, okay, so we say that uh, the culture of Palestine defines me. And I want to, today, I will explain to you the culture of Palestine and we will have uh, a virtual trip during my culture, through my culture. Uh, first of all, um, I want to show you the, uh, the, the, like a brief explanation about the culture of Palestine. Uh, like the culture of Palestine is the culture of the Palestinian people, uh, of course, like located in a historic Palestine, as well as the, the uh, diaspora, like me. And um, uh, the, the Palestinian culture is influenced by many diverse cultures and religions which have existed in historic Palestine from the early Canaanite period onward, before the 1970s. And uh, cultural contribution to the field of art, literature, music, costume, and cuisine express the Palestinian identity despite the geographical separation between the Palestinian territories, Palestinian citizens, and diaspora. Uh, first of all, I want to show you the Palestinian costume that I'm wearing today. Uh, this is the Palestinian costume. And uh, we have here some arts on the costume. And I will show you it also uh, later on the... Um, on the photos <laughs> so yeah can you continue mm -hmm. yeah thank you uh here are some palestinian art uh at the left the artist joan anani uh, and she also drawing the palestinian costume uh on the medal najil ali uh, he's an important uh artist and uh, he's drawing uh some of his experience uh, with the Palestinian conflict. At the right, uh, right Katanani, and uh, he's drawing the uh, Quds in Jerusalem, and also Al-Aqsa Al Mosque, and also uh, the, the, the thumb, something that he's wearing on, oh, on his, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, the, the thing that he is wearing is called Hatta, and uh, it's also a traditional costume for Palestinians. The they just wearing on the head. Yes. Like here. Yes, this is a uh, hat. Yeah. Uh. Here is a video of the Palestinian music and dance, uh, dabka and uh, like the folk dance and a song also. It's two minutes. I really recommend to watch it.
الدمع من دم الوريد خلي هاجر البلد وسافر لبعيد غاب الله يعود الويلي واشبك ايده بايدي ارجع ايام الهنا ونعيش بكيفي Uh, I hope you have enjoyed uh, it. So uh, this is the Palestinian costume that also I'm wearing. Uh, we have also uh, for the woman, a oh, uh, costume for the woman and for the men on the left. Uh, and uh, all of those are, arts are like uh, handmade from Palestinian uh, women. And yeah, like, Uh, if you can, yeah, all of this, all of this, also, all the pictures are handmade uh, uh, costume. And what are traditional Palestinian um, uh, fiber arts? So, do are these clothes made on like a loom? Do I, you know? I really can't hear you. Um, can can't you repeat it? Yeah. Uh, Do you know, are they made like on a loom? Do you know what a loom is? Uh, yeah, like something that uh, they put the, uh, like, uh, like you, you may, you mean like make it uh, on something that it's very, uh, like cir it's circle and make it from it? You mean that? Sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, they're yeah. different kinds. Okay. Yeah. All right, so Peter was one. Peter said, that was cool. Uh, Peter's talking about the, the video that you just showed us. And earlier, oh. Peter also wanted to know about uh, what types of food that you eat. And it looks like you're about to tell us about the food. Oh, so yeah. So yeah, you're lucky, Peter. So this is the Palestinian cuisine. Um, The, the Palestinian cuisine is uh, consists of food from commonly uh, eaten by Palestinians, which includes uh, those living in Palestinian, Jordan, refugee camps in Arabic countries, as well by the Palestinian diaspora. The cuisine is a uh, depression of culture of civilization that settled in the region of Palestine, particularly during and after the Islamic uh, Uh, Islamic era, beginning with the Arab uh, Umayyad uh, conflict, then the eventual Persian uh, influence uh, Abbasids, and ending with the strong uh, the Ottoman Turkish. It is similar to other uh, Levantian cuisine, including Lebanese, Syrian, and Jordan, uh, because they are like our neighbors uh, by the borders. So of course the uh, like we have. Uh, the food in common and yeah we we share it uh, together and there are lots of like each uh, meal has many uh, different uh, kinds of it. and uh, I will show you some traditional me meals for uh, right. different kinds of culture. ingredients which is what Beasley just asked um, they wanted to know Uh, what is what is your food made of? And I think if you, when you show us your different foods, uh, we can see that. Yeah. So what are some uh, different types here? So uh, we have rice meals, lots of rice meals, stew meals, bread meals, uh, mahashi, dips and uh, dips and side uh, dishes, salads, sweets, and uh, snack foods. All and right. yeah, I will show you some of them. Uh, this is the musakhan. Uh, like this is a Palestinian Arab cuisine dish, and uh, it's a compo composed of roasted chicken baked with onions, uh, some milk, uh, allspice, saffron, and fried pine nuts served with taboon bread. It's called taboon uh, because it's also um, uh, handmade. Um, it's also known as muhammad or musakhan, like it's. Uh, Muhammad or Musakhan is because uh, it's in English like uh, it's very hot and uh, they make it in a special way 
It's often considers, uh, considered the national dish of Palestine. It also remains a very popular dish with Palestinian diaspora. And uh, Musakhan considers as bread meal, as I mentioned before. Mm, it looks delicious. I want it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you should try it. <laughs> try it. Uh, this is matzah. Uh, it's lamb cooked in a sauce of uh, fermented dried yogurt and served with rice and uh, bulgur. Uh, matzah considers as a rice meal too. I, as I mentioned also, we have lots of rice meals and this is also one of the rice meals that we have. Um, <laughs> Okay, this is makluba. It's also upside down chicken and, dry, uh, and rice. It's a Palestinian tradition. Makluba means upside down in Arabic and is a pot of stewed meat, rice, and fried vegetables cooked and flipped onto a serving dish to form an impressive sour. And makluba considers as a rice meal too. And uh, it's very delicious also. <laughs> I, I recommend it. Uh, this is bamia, okra with tomatoes. Uh, it's okra cooked with tomato sauce and onions. Uh, bamia considers as a stew meal because like it's with tomato. Mm. Yeah. Uh, this is mujaddara. It's a lenty and bulgur uh, casserole. Mujaddara considers as a rice meal too. They sometimes put rice with it, and also grains, of course. So um, Beasley saying they're going to have to look all these up, and I'm right there with you. I'm going to have to go try all of these as well. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> oh, uh, this is uh, kanafa. It's a traditional Middle Eastern dessert. Uh, it's not only in Palestine, but it was made first in Palestine uh, with then noodle-like pastry or alternatively fine simonia dough uh, soaked in sweet sugar-based syrup and typically layered with cheese or with other ingredients such as clotted cream or nuts, depending on the origin. It's popular in the Arab world, particularly the Levant and Egypt, and especially among Palestinians. In addition, Variants are found in Turkey, Greece, and the Balkans, as well as in the South Caucasus. Uh, this is question time. If anyone wanna say anything or ask me anything, you're uh, invited to, to do. All right, well, definitely. Um, I do, Let's see, I can't find your, oh, there you go. All right, so let's, yeah. uh, let's throw you on the big screen there, Luna, and- yeah. So I'll go back and uh, so please uh, explorers put your questions in the chat boxes about anything that we saw earlier. And uh, let's go back and see if we can address some of these. First of all, um, our uh, ice cream shout out flavor roll call here. We have another vanilla with Evan. Uh, Olivia likes orange. Abigail likes cookie and cream or mint chocolate chip. I guess it's hard yeah. to make that decision. Uh, <laughs> Uh, vanilla, strawberry, and cookie dough, Sandra says. Peter likes uh, mint, pineapple, and mango. Uh, nice. Cam likes chocolate. Oh, lots of different nice. flavors here. Uh, let's see. Um, Beasley wants to know, do you have any sisters or brothers? Do you have any siblings? Yes, I do. Uh, I have one sister and uh, two brothers. They are twins, and all of them are younger than me. Um, I'm the oldest one. <laughs> And uh, yeah. Are uh, you a good, good big sister? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm responsible about the family. But uh, sometimes, you know, like young, younger uh, brothers will make noise or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, w I was a younger brother, so we're really good at that. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, Jeanette wants to know uh, in your home area, your neighborhood, is there a, a mixture of uh, Jews and Muslims, or do you live in a primarily a Muslim neighborhood, or what's the makeup of your particular neighborhood? Okay, um, like our neighborhood is very small, so let's take it as a town. Uh, my town is um, like mixed with uh, Muslims and Christians, but the majority is Muslims. Uh, 
like we have towns that mix Arabs and uh, Jews, but uh, my town, no. But the other towns, the near towns with me, are uh, like uh, the near uh, of Sakhnin are uh, Jews and Muslims and Arabs, like not only Muslims, we have also Christians and Druze and Baha'is. Uh, also, I like I meet uh, my daily life lots of friends that they are different from me, as I've mentioned before, but that d does not uh, make me feel uh, different because, yeah, we are all uh, together in, in this country. Great. And they're just saying smiley face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. So what um, I know a lot of people, uh, a lot of our guest speakers, a lot of our explorers have been asking uh, because the whole world right now is dealing with COVID-19. What are some of the um, the rules and restrictions in, in your town? Can you mm -hmm. go outside? Uh, can you go to school? Like what, how? How okay. is your neighborhood these days? Um, actually, we don't have lockdown. So uh, actually, we can go outside, but uh, the government uh, says that, like, stay at home, stay safe at home. Uh, we have a full quarantine. Uh, most of the stores are closed. Uh, schools, universities are closed. Also, my school, like, uh, one and a half month ago, uh, I did not go to school, and we only uh, like study on, uh, learn online, and um, yeah. But like the situation in Israel are like the so, uh, situations of uh, COVID nineteen are decreasing, and hopefully they were like we won't have lots of uh, situations, and um, yeah. Great, great. Uh, well, yeah, I hope if it someone, stays under if someone want, yeah, I hope to. If someone <laughs> wanna share also from uh, actually, I don't know all the states uh, in the USA or <laughs> the state that they have mentioned. If someone wanna mention their uh, what do they have uh, restrictions in their uh, state or country, also mm -hmm. I I will be interested. Yeah, so definitely let us know in the chat box uh, specifically. Yeah. I know we have Maryland here today, Ohio. Uh, let us know what is happening in your state. And I can start off in here in Portland, Maine. Uh, mm -hmm. Any uh, what they're calling non-essential uh, businesses. Yeah. So like a furniture store or clothing store or uh, restaurants, they're all closed mm -hmm. down. Restaurants can stay open for takeout. So you can go and get food to go for yeah, delivery, but uh, but most other things are closed down right now, uh, and I know other places are are either more restrictive or a little bit less. Um, so let's see, uh, in Georgia, uh, uh, let's see, Beasley's in Georgia, and stuff like eating places are closed. So I think pretty much across the United States right now, a lot of places are. Uh, anywhere that has uh, big groups of people. So like a restaurant yeah. or obviously sporting events or anything like that. Uh, but I do know there's a there's a problem with, with some places with, with groups not obeying uh, that. And uh, so, yeah. So yeah. Um, unfortunately, <laughs> let's unfortunately. see. Uh, Cam is just saying Cam. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, Jeanette saying uh, shelter in place, so non-essential stores are closed, uh, take out only, school closed through the end of the year. So the, the U.S. school year, by the way, it typically runs from August to maybe June, so it's coming yeah. up really, really soon, uh, the, the typical end of the school year. And Boston is nearing peak, so we hope to see a, a drop soon. Uh, What's, what is your typical school year, Luna? When do you typically start the beginning and when's the mm -hmm. ending? What time of year? Uh, the beginning of the year is on September, like, uh, uh, yeah, on 21st of September, uh, mm -hmm. like all the, like most of the times are 21st. And uh, we finish at 21st uh, of June. It's also my birthday, <laughs> my 
my also in 21st of June. So I uh, celebrate my birthday at the uh, end of this school year. <laughs> well, yeah. I hope that we're all able to go and you get to see many friends uh, in person <laughs> for yeah. your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope to. All right, so uh, please let us uh, keep uh, any questions coming, but uh, do would you like to jump into your activity? I know we're, we're yes. just past 45 minutes and we wanna be respectful of your time. Uh, Olivia's yeah. saying that her birthday is June 20th. How cool is oh. that, one day apart? Oh, nice. How old are you, Ju uh, Cam? Yeah, uh, no, uh, Julia, Olivia, sorry. Olivia, uh, and Cam's saying it's the day after his birthday. Olivia is hi. seven. Oh, hi, Olivia. So you will be seven and I will be 14. <laughs> nice. All right. And Beasley is 13, June 21st. Is your birthday June 21st as well? How many people do we, is everyone oh. on the show today born in June? <laughs> Actually, uh, 20, 21st is the longest day of the year and also uh, the, the beginning of the summer. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. we are twins. Be oh, twins. Beasley. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like she was born in 2006 and I was also born in 2006. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, that's amazing. Birthday twins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, did you want to share, uh, before we jump into your activity, did you want to share uh, how to continue asking you questions? Yeah, if someone is wanna ask any question privately, can uh, ask me on Instagram, Snapchat, or Facebook. And yeah, I would right. be so happy. Okay, so if you have time to think about it and uh, and you have other questions about Palestine and uh, and Israel, then Luna is your expert. And yeah. uh, and then I'm super excited about this, Luna. What are Let's we looking at? Let's have a at? nice activity. Okay. Uh, take a sheet of paper and mm -hmm. uh, I want each of you to write your first name, middle and last name in Arabic. And the first one who finish it will send it here or no, sorry, um, will say that he finished it or uh, can write it in the uh, chat and uh, maybe he will be the winner. All right, so you can also, if anyone is uh, on Twitter or Instagram, or if you're on any of the social medias, uh, if you want, you can post a picture of your name in Arabic. And if you use the hashtag GeoShow, we'll see it. And uh, we'll see, um, if you do it right now, then I'll see it and put it on the screen. If not, then yeah. we'll just check afterwards. So. Uh, so each, just so people know what we're looking at. Uh, so find your, is it English letter in the in the symbol right to the right of it would be how you write it. Excuse me. So for example, if if my name is Abigail and it starts with an A, I'm going to write uh, this first symbol here. Yeah, the first symbol okay. from right to left. Actually, okay. because Arabic from right to left, right to left, not from left to right. Uh, but yeah, it's like kind of hard, but I will help you also if anyone wanna, wanna have All that. right, so everyone take those symbols and write your name from right to left. Let's try it yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, try it. <laughs> And I'm gonna try all this, I'm gonna try this out with everyone as well, so. <laughs> Did you see the link in the chat, Luna? Yeah, thank you, okay. Dianti. Thank you. 
All right, Peter's saying he's done. I'm done. Oh, right. so you I are very fast. I think some people are starting to finish. Olivia's done. All right, so it looks Sam like people also. are starting to finish up here. Yeah. And Sam. here, let me just, uh, I'll be, I'll be brave here. I'll show mine and uh, yeah. you can tell me show what me I need it. to improve on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's very good. Brandon. Are you just actually, telling me, are you just telling me that to make me feel good or is it no, really no. good? No, actually it's really good, but we don't write it like this. We we don't write it in separated uh, letters. We write it together. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, well, but good I try. try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, so definitely um, let us know if you are on Twitter or anywhere else. Uh, just use the hashtag Geo Show, and we'll see if um, we can repost it and uh, and send it. We'll make sure that it gets over to Luna uh, as well. You could also anyone can email it to me as well if you if you have yeah. a picture, uh, and I'll put my email in the chat as well i also will uh upload it to uh twitter so you will see it maybe all right Just, and yeah. did you write your name luna yes can we yes. see uh how uh, it I looks would, when everything's connected yes. <laughs> yeah i will show you it in, on twitter so it will be a full screen um Okay, uh, actually, uh, I don't use Twitter. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and I really did not uh, post any uh, any any uh, post or something. So I will show you it here, and I hope it's very good. Like, see it. Oh, I hope to. I hope so. It's okay. So up top yeah. is separated, and below is yeah. together. Yes, L U N A, and here is together. Ah, uh, okay, I yeah. can see. Oh, <laughs> that's great. It's like uh, learning how to write cursive in English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, it looks like. Uh, Jeanette is going to head out saying, this was awesome, or this was great. And I hope that some of the other students in my school got to tune in. Uh, cool. And uh, so, uh, would you like I to- I really did it on Twitter. So if you want to show it to other others. And... Oh, you really did. You really yeah, did it Yeah, yeah, finally, finally. <laughs> Okay, let me see here. <laughs> oh. Let's see. I wonder if I can turn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I really enjoyed this and you guys are very awesome. All here, of I'll you. see if I can if I can turn it around here. Um, no, great. So yeah, we'll start to wrap up here. It was so lovely to have you on. Uh, what we always say here on, especially meet a local. Okay, here we go. Just give me a second. We can always sort things out. Boom! How you like that? Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, that's great. We can see that a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Peter's saying this was the best. All right. Uh, oh, thank you, Peter. Peter. Okay, great. So 
Uh, so yeah, so what we always say here on Meet a Local, uh, from my personal experience, one of the things that I love best about traveling is meeting people, meeting people. So we share places with you a lot of the times on our virtual field trips, uh, but the people are, are it, you can't replace people. Places we can see virtually, but it's, a, it's meeting people, it's meeting locals that you really get to experience cultures. So definitely yeah. uh, when you get out, and what's great about technology is even though many of us are at our homes right now and we can't physically go traveling, well, we can still use technology to meet Luna today and go meet locals that way. So uh, Luna, do you have any closing thoughts or things that we should uh, uh, must see when we come to, to your home country? To, uh, that definitely should be on the top of our list? Uh, you mean like towns that you or cities that you may uh, interest you or maybe food that may uh, maybe you can taste it or yeah but, let's go with food yeah. if you can uh, okay. if you could tell us one food we have to eat and one one place I know there's many so I'm gonna put yeah. you on the spot tell me tell us one food and one place that we must visit when we come okay. to your home first of all one food is uh kinofa the sweet that i showed you with a cheese and uh lots of things uh nuts and yeah actually it's very very uh tasty and yeah but you should uh make a diet after it <laughs> and um the place is uh jerusalem because I really like Jerusalem and uh, it's, as you know, it's a diverse city and it's one of the most important cities in the world. And I really like it and recommend it too. Oh, great, great. Uh, well, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, once again, we can't thank you enough for coming on Learn Around the World's Meet a Local and sharing your home uh, with us. We love to, we love to learn uh, from uh, from locals around the world about their homes. So Explorers, uh, definitely, uh, I know we can't hear you, but give uh, Luna a round of applause and, and let her know in the chat box how much you, uh, you love today's program. Again, uh, thanks for coming on Meet a Local and Meeting Luna today, which was brought to you by Learn Around the World. And big shout out to Project Exchange okay. for making this connection with us and introducing us all to Luna. So until next time, explorers, don't forget, it's a great big world out there. So keep exploring, keep washing your hands and keep physical distancing. And don't forget, happy Earth Day, everyone. So go out and yeah. do something great for the planet today. Bye, explorers and bye, Luna. Bye-bye. <laughs>